So how do we build these suffix arrays? Well, an easy answer to that question is you sort the suffixes, right? Because it's the nature of the suffix array. All it is is, in some sense, a sorted list of all the suffixes of the text T. So the key to being able to build the suffix array would seem to just be being able to sort these things quickly. So let's say we, um, as an initial idea, let's say that we just use our favorite sorting algorithm. You know, for example, maybe our favorite sorting algorithm is quick sort. You know, a, a randomized sorting algorithm that's able to achieve probably the way we learned it. And I'll show you a little, ex, you know, a, a version of the quick sort algorithm written in Python. Don't look too hard at this. We don't have to go through line by line what it means. Uh, and I, I'm not going to try to argue that this is an efficient implementation of quick sort. But anyway, it's a good conceptual implementation of quick sort. And when you first learned it, you probably learned that quick sort is... O of m log m expected time if you're sorting a list of m items, okay? So if this is our favorite algorithm, maybe if we apply this, we can hope we'll get something like big O of m log n expected time on a text of length m, you know, sorting its suffixes. But that won't quite work, again, for the sort of the same reason why when we talked about our binary search strategy in the previous video, you know, we said that we have to take into account the fact that when we do the comparison of the query to the pivot, we're actually comparing two strings. And any time we compare two strings, that means we're doing lexicographic comparison, which means we're doing a loop that goes left to right across the characters of the two strings. So when we take this into account, it turns out we have to multiply in another factor of m. And that's because at each iteration of quicksort, we're comparing this, this line here, we're comparing... Uh, one of the elements in the one of the one of the suffixes to a pivot suffix. So we're comparing two suffixes, right? Two suffixes that, in the worst case, have length m, right? So we're doing a big O of m comparison at each of the iterations. Therefore, we have to multiply in another factor of m into the big O. So we end up not with big O of m log m expected time. We end up with big O of m squared log m expected time. If we were to just use naively apply quick sort to an array of um, suffixes. Okay, so maybe that's not the best idea. We don't just want to naively apply quicksort. And when I say naive, I guess one of the things I would point out is that this uh, algorithm has no concept and in no way takes advantage of the fact that this isn't just any array of strings. This is an array of strings, all of which are suffixes of the same text. Right, so Maybe algorithms that take the kind of suffix nature of the data into account will do a better job than just a generic sorting algorithm like quicksort. Well, okay. Well, let's go back to something we've already looked at, which is just the conceptual relationship between the suffix tree and the suffix array. So here's the suffix tree, suffix array on the screen. And of course, we already sort of have talked through how the leaves of the suffix tree basically correspond to the elements of the suffix array. But that's kind of interesting, right? Because what that means is if we happen to already have a suffix tree of a text T, maybe there's some way that we can just turn it into a suffix array. Like we can go to the leaves of the tree and if we visit them in just the right order, then we can emit the, the offsets of the suffix array. Okay. So recall that the leaves of the tree are just also the elements of the array. So if we wanted to try to do this, it would really just be a question of visiting the leaves in the right order. Okay, if we visit them in the right order, we can essentially read off the elements of the suffix array as we go. Okay, so let's try an idea. Let's do a depth first traversal of our suffix tree. And with one slight uh, modification, right, it's not just we're not just going to visit the children of a node in any order. We're going to visit the children of a node in alphabetical order. Right? So for example, right off the bat, when we have to decide how we're going to descend from the root, we have three choices. We can descend on an edge labeled A, an edge labeled BA, or an edge labeled dollar sign. We're going to pick the edge labeled dollar sign first, because that's the one that comes alphabetically first out of all those edges. Okay. So if we end up traversing the tree like this, let's say we, again, we start up here. Now we're going to do a, a depth first traversal. We start at the root. We visit one of the children first. It's going to be this one because it has the lexicographically smallest label. And 
we get our 6. 6 goes into the suffix array first. Okay, now I'm going to switch colors. We're going to pop back up to the root, and we're going to descend again, this time on the next alphabetically larger uh, uh, edge label, which is the one uh, labeled A. So we're going to go down here. Okay, now we're at a new node. We're going to make a new decision. We're going to go again to the next, um, to the, the child with the alphabetically smallest label. That's the one labeled dollar sign again. So we go here, and there we go. We got that 5. I'm going to put that in there. Switch back to blue. Okay, so we keep going, pop back up, go down the edge that starts with A, we get our 2. Keep going, pop back up, now we go down the edge labeled BA, go down the edge labeled dollar sign, we get our 3, and so on, pop back up, get our 0. It's getting a little messy, but anyway, you get the idea. We can fill in the entire suffix array over the course of this traversal, as long as we're careful to always visit the children of a node in order alphabetical order according to the edge label. Okay, and this is interesting, right, because after all, the suffix tree also only takes big O of M space, and the suffix tree can be constructed using Ukonin's algorithm, as we mentioned earlier, in big O of M time and space, which means that a strategy for building the suffix array could be we build the suffix tree first with Ukonin's algorithm, then we traverse it and emit the, sub, emit the offsets that constitute the suffix array, and that's actually efficient. Asymptotically, it's quite efficient because it's overall big O of M time and space. Right? The traversal of the suffix tree is also big O of M time, so, so really all we're doing is building and then traversing the suffix tree. At no point have we built any data structures that are larger than big O of M, so this overall strategy is big O of M time and space. Kind of nice, right? And, and we're sort of reusing some of what we learned about suffix trees. Okay, however, suffix trees, like we said in the previous lecture, are bigger than suffix arrays. We would rather build the suffix array directly if there was a way to do that. If we could just directly build the array, not by way of the tree, that would be even better because then our memory footprint would just be dictated by the size of the array, plus maybe a little bit, but not by the size of the suffix tree, which we already know is some significant constant factor bigger than the suffix array. Okay, so to avoid that overhead of having to build the tree first and of having to have that tree take up a lot of memory footprint on our way to getting the suffix array, we can instead build the suffix array directly. Okay, in fact, our first proposal of doing quicksort was an example of a direct algorithm for building the suffix array, but there are algorithms that do build the suffix array directly, not by way of the suffix tree, but do it very efficiently. I won't go into detail on any of them. I will just show you uh, uh, references and tell you which ones are the important ones. Well, the sort of early, very practical ones were, the first of all, the one proposed in the original suffix array paper, that's the first one here, and then also one that's called Larson Sadakane. And these are both examples of big O of M log M algorithms that nonetheless are quite fast in practice. So they're not the absolute best we can do asymptotically, like we just said, we can, by way of the suffix tree, do big O of M, right? So these are worse than that, time-wise. But in practice, they're usually pretty quick, right? They have really good practical implementations, and they were popular for a long time. Then along came some, some newer algorithms that uh, are linear time. And uh, some of these algorithms use ideas like difference cover, and then probably the most practical one is the one shown at the very bottom, which uses an idea called induced suffix sorting, right? So this paper on the bottom, which I put a star by, describes an algorithm sometimes called SAIS, and that is probably the most practical algorithm for efficient and direct construction of suffix arrays.